If you could take one guy to an island with you and you knew you'd be safe because he was the best man, he was going to keep you happy, if it was between me and your father, who would you take? My daddy. I don't think you're wrong about that. Hello, this is Lee. What happened to my brother? So that's Lee Lee Chan, though. I don't understand. Which part are you having trouble with? Well, I can't be his guardian. Well, your brother provided for your nephew's upkeep. I think the idea was that you would relocate. Relocate to where? Well, if you yeah. look, it was my impression that you'd spent a lot of time here. I swear. Yeah. I'm just a backup. Lee, nobody can appreciate what you've been through. And if you really feel you can't take this on, you know, that's your right. Where are we going, to the orphanage? Shut up. Get in the car. Can't obey your orders until you unlock the door. Whatever you decide, he can always stay with us if he wants to come up weekends. Do you want to be his guardian? Well, he doesn't we want to already, be my guardian. We for already Christ's sake, got a house. We're trying to lose some kids, kids at this point. House. Hello. Hello, Lee. I just want to call and say I'm sorry. How's Patrick doing? Well, he doesn't really open up with me. Do you actually have sex with these girls? Strictly basement business. What does that mean? It means I'm working on it. You don't want to be my guardian? That's fine with me. Not that. It's just the logistics. All my friends are here. I got two girlfriends, and I'm in a band. You're a janitor and Quincy. What the hell do you care where you live? I said a lot of terrible things to you. My heart was broken, and I know yours is broken, too. No, you don't understand. There's nothing it's there. It's not true. something wrong with me. Do you want me to call your friends? I don't know. What do you want me to do? Okay. I'm not gonna bother you. I'm gonna just sit here until you calm down. All right, I'm calming it. Would you please just go away? No. It's not a shock. Come on, pull it up. It's not a shock. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Give it up one more time for the best movie of the year, Manchester by the Sea. I, I love this film so much, guys. Thanks so much for coming here and uh, letting me talk about it with you. It's a real privilege. Great job. Thanks. We're thrilled to be here. This is the most energetic Q&A we've had so far. Yeah. So, it's, it, not, it's not post-screening. I know. That's true. Yeah. 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 Uh, guys, uh, so kind of talk, about, talk to me about developing this script. It was initially a story that came to you from outside. So when did you sort of really find your voice within it? Uh, after a couple of years, um, I found my voice with it. Uh, Matt Damon and John Krasinski brought me the idea for the movie. Uh, they wanted me to write the script, and it took about a year before I could get a good beat on it. And then, uh, and then I thought I had a good beat on it. And after that, uh, things went pretty swimmingly. Uh, what did you? What were you doing in that year? I was just working sitting every around, day. No, no. Oh yeah, uh, every, every day, all day. <laughs> work, work, work. <laughs> um, I was, you know, fishing around for a way to write it. I was writing scenes I didn't like. I was writing, no, yes, better? Oh, OK, sorry. Uh, I don't know what I was doing. How many pages, did, like total, would you say were written in the whole film? Six. <laughs> Not in that year, I mean total, oh. like did you, uh, including everything you cut I out. I really don't know. Because uh, there's so many drafts, and then you recycle some of it, and you throw out some of it. So it's a hard to say. Uh, you know, it's hundreds, a few hundred. 300? I, I don't know. I'm just guessing. I don't know. Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I want to let Casey take over for a little bit longer. Yeah, please. Uh, when, you got the, when you got the script, Casey, what, was, what, what were your first thoughts about playing this character? Was there trepidation at all about having to sort of occupy his head? I just wondered how we were going to shoot all 400 pages. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. There was... Um, I didn't... I wasn't... I, there was a little bit of anxiety about how how to do some of the parts, uh, the, the scenes and some aspects of the character because it was very, it seemed both complicated but also, yeah, it seemed very complicated and it seemed like a big, a big job to do and some of the scenes seemed hard to do but I also had total faith in, in Kenny and the director's kind of your guide and, you know, uh, without that you get, uh, you know, you're not sort of reckless enough and, you know, I wanted to feel like I could just do anything and that and and um, Kenny would make sure that it turned out good. 
It's such a, an incredible performance that you and Lucas that you, that you give as well. For you, Casey, was there anything that you latched onto about Lee that sort of helped guide you through every scene, something about him or any sort of inspiration that you took? Well, that's a tough question. I don't know. There's sort of a lot of different things about his personality that some that I could relate to and some I had to use my imagination with more than, than other parts of him. And But, it, you know, it was written completely. It was well, There wasn't a whole lot of I had to just sort of bring what was there to life. Uh, I mean, it was already, you know, alive in the written form, but I had to sort of bring it to life as an actor and and have the right moods and emotions and everything. Um, and, um, yeah. Lucas, you have a, a scene in the in the middle of the film that I, I can't imagine being anything but really daunting for for an actor to have to pull off. I don't want to give anything away for for the audience as to as to what happens. I'll say the freezer scene. Uh, can you talk about uh, about doing that and, and working on it? Yeah, for sure. Um, so the the good thing about a scene that's uh, very daunting on the page is that there's almost nothing you can do about it, at least in the weeks leading up to it, I was able to just let it go. So I was, I, I could, uh, it, it wasn't, it didn't feel like it was festering or, or I was just constantly afraid of doing this scene. But but the night before I, I had to do it, I called a friend and uh, asked for help because I started getting scared the night before. And for those of you who haven't seen the movie, it's, my character has sort of a, I don't want to give give anything it's not, away. It's a panic attack, yeah. breakdown of some kind. And uh, and and so I asked for help, and and my friend said, "Well, why don't you just try and not talk to anyone for a whole day?" So I thought, "Sure, yeah, I'll try that." And I woke up uh, and in silence, and I didn't talk to my mom. And I got to the set, and the costume designers were saying things to me, but I just didn't respond. Uh, and her advice to me was like, you have that right. You have the right to, to be a little rude at times, or, or, or not to be rude, but to do something that somebody else would mistake for rude, and you don't need to take ownership of, of uh, maybe hurting their feelings a little bit, and you can apologize to them later. But the result was at the end of the day, there was so much built up inside of me that needed to be communicated that uh, all, all, all I really needed to do was, um, was, was, was that at that point, just have a panic attack in, in many respects. Just do it. Uh, and, just and ready it, for a panic attack. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> uh, Kenneth, you, you come from the theater world. You've made a couple movies before. Do, you're a big fan of rehearsal, and I think that shows in, in your films in the way that the dialogue comes across. It's all... Very natural seeming, but also incredibly specific in the way that humor is weaved throughout tragedy, all within a, a minute or two of, of one scene. What was the rehearsal period like uh, on this film? Well, it's hard to rehearse on a film uh, too much. We rehearsed for about a week, a steady week, and then uh, uh, a bit throughout the following week, and then as much as we could when we were shooting the movie, but you don't get a lot of chances to rehearse on a film set. Uh, you can sometimes rehearse while they're setting up the scene. You can rehearse the night before and on weekends. I like to rehearse a lot because I think it just gives everyone a common foundation from which to approach the scene. So in a way, if it's, I don't feel like there's any danger of like doing it in rehearsal and then not having it uh, on, when you're shooting the, the scene because I think that's a, kind of a hit and miss approach and I don't think with the actors of this caliber, it's quite that hit or miss. Getting oriented into the character's situation and everyone understanding more or less where everyone's coming from and then proceeding from that. Uh, it, it can really help a lot. And you have something to refer back to when you're uh, on the set and uh, going through these scenes. And then when you get there, you have a chance to do it a few different ways and, uh, and shoot the scenes as much as you want because movie scenes are short, you know? A really big movie, five pages is a very long scene in a movie and it's not, it's nothing in a, it's not nothing in a play, but it's, it's not a particularly long scene for a play. Are you, are you rewriting it all on set? Are you sort of still writing up until the day? No, I like to finish everything as, as completely as possible well in advance, because I don't think that well on my feet. I mean, I'll have an idea for a line of dialogue uh, occasionally on this set, and I'll, I'll suggest, I'll ask them to say it uh, if I think of a joke or something, or some, something. Occasionally I'll come up with something while we're there, but I usually, it's usually an addition, not a, not a, not a substitution. Do you remember, at one point, I remember you just sitting down. Lucas, you're not allowed to ask questions. <laughs> I, I remember Lucas. you. Lucas. 
I'm, I want to hear it. <laughs> All right. All right. One question. Go ahead. <laughs> at one point, I remember you sitting down at uh, San, uh, Anna Brishnikov's desk or her character's desk and just writing out the scene that we were going to do, you just wrote it all out by hand, Did I? or you rewrote some dialogue, but I just remember you sitting down for like two hours, uninterrupted, working out, oh, uh, maybe, maybe even like one so you line. You lied, Kenny, you lied about No, I just about not remember, I don't really remember things too well, um, but uh, I guess I did that. Um, I think, you know, I don't know what that was for. I think it was for some, I think that was when you guys were like making out on the bed and some extra it was. dialogue for that scene. Um, but yeah, so I'll do that. But for the most part, um, I, I like to have everything, the writing part taken care of before you start to shoot or before you go into rehearsal. Uh, in, in a way, with, the, in, in, with a movie, you're a little safer because if you shoot something, if you come up with something on the set and you shoot it, you don't have to use it. But in a play, it's a little more difficult because the actors are trying to learn their parts and they're trying to get into a rhythm and they're trying to let go of the rewrites and not worry about, uh, was this in this draft, was that in that draft? But in a film set, I think the actors are a bit more used to, okay, we'll try one this way, we'll try one that way. Uh, so there's a little bit more freedom uh, to write stuff on the spot, not worry about it too much. Casey, uh, Lee, your character, Lee, is, uh, you know, he's a man kind of trying to continue life while at the same time not moving on from something that is almost just impossible to move on from. What was it like to occupy that headspace for the, for the time that you were shooting the film? I feel like you ask those guys easier questions than you ask me. <laughs> You're the lead, man. That's a really hard question. Um, I, don't, I don't think you should be commenting me, on, the, me, on the question. Excuse me, I, this is my <laughs> question. Yeah, I know. Excuse but, me. But you're not answering I, I, it. <laughs> What do you think that I would the say? End. Nope. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't, I just think you should answer the question and okay. not like <laughs> criticize the type of Wasn't question you're getting. Criticism. I appreciate that, kind of thank you. You're welcome. You must have to deal with some difficult guests on the show. I, I think that they, he asked them easier questions. Just saying. I didn't say he should ask me. Sounds questions. like carping to me. <laughs> I, um, you know, I would just go through the day not talking to anyone and I just gave myself <laughs> Permission to be as rude as possible. Not rude, not rude. Some people would think it's rude, but it was, I never spoke to anybody. Um, and Were you the one who gave Lucas that advice? <laughs> yes, I think. Yeah. I, um, I remember him not talking to anyone. I think he said, I'm not, trying, I'm not talking to anyone today. <laughs> I said, what? He said, I'm yeah. trying not to talk to anybody. And then and he yeah. went, I'm not talking to anyone. And then that was also the day, he might have been embarrassed to say this, that, that Lucas asked someone to the prom on the day that he wasn't talking to A few days to earlier, I asked. And then he found got the answer that no. That was the day. I found out she couldn't go with yes. me. Oh, you got the answer no. She said I got yes. the answer yes earlier, and then, then, then she that said day no. I got the you answer no. your mind? Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. you, you weren't talk. talking very much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but then she changed her mind again. And then, and then yes you, again? Yes. This and then does not later. sound like oh, the start I, of a good I, relationship. It was, it, I, I had to intervene. I didn't want, yeah, a few days later, you were like, "What?" I, like, I didn't want Luke, I didn't want Lucas to be upset while he's making the movie. You said I was supposed to be making him as upset as I could over the course of the picture. That's different. Oh. I didn't want her to be making him upset. I see. So I said, it's "What, also what are you doing? You what are you doing? Saying you're going to go to the prom with him and then just bailing? You can't do that." Yeah. She was like, "Oh, I wanted to go, but my friend said I shouldn't." And I said, "Wait, oh. is this for real? Did you actually?" Yeah, this do is real. <laughs> Yeah. And what's the end I of the was, story? It was also right in front of me. Can you, was this no. was she in did the I movie? Did that in front of you? Did you or not, did you not go not to the prom with this woman? You were it embarrassing me. Did you end up going to the prom with her or not? She, she didn't go to prom. Who'd you go to the prom with? My friend. Uh, yeah. Anyway, but uh, over the course of the film, he thought he was going to the prom with the this best girl. way for me to stay in character was to think a lot about <laughs> Lucas's <laughs> dates. The proms, the, not going to the prom, going to the prom. It was pretty dramatic and it helped me get through. So like just before action was called, you were going, oh, Lucas. Poor Lucas. Going, she's leaving him again. Yeah. Um, all right. So I, I guess that I uh, just sort of would do what, you know, um, you kind of, and you, through the rehearsal process, you start to sort of wade into the character and into the part. And then once the movie started, you are sufficiently wet and inside of it all. And, and you just sort of stay there as much as possible. And other actors I know can kind of, get in and out of the pool and they're fine. I kind of have to just jump in and stay there until the party's over because then I, it's hard to go in and out. So I would mostly sort of stay in the character, not in a kind of 
like a big showy way of call me my name or staying in costume or anything, but just kind of being in the right mood of that character or with his attitude and his personality as much as I could muster. And sometimes, you know, we would do flashbacks and things that were much lighter and we would also have a lot of fun on the set or some fun on the set sometimes. And it didn't seem to just kind of get in the way of doing the stuff that was um, heavier. He does ha is a sort of a carrying a certain weight or something to him. And, um, and I, I was able to do both of those things. It would make sense that you would able, be able to sort of be a little bit light on set because even through all the heaviness of this movie, there is an underlying sense of humor through all of it. The relationship between you and Lucas is almost like a buddy comedy at times. And you are incredibly sarcastic. Both of you are incredibly sarcastic with each other. Mm -hmm. Being from Massachusetts, I would say it's a very Massachusetts sarcasm that the, that the two of you have with each other as yeah. well. Uh, did you feel a certain relationship to Eastern Massachusetts in, in, in making the movie? Well, the, the movie's set there, and I guess that, and, you know, Kenny's got a, an amazing uncanny ear for picking up, the, like, rhythm and speech and, and, and writing naturalistic dialogue that also is quite moving and funny and all that stuff all at once. And so um, he kind of, he, he captured it, but I, I was also am, am from that part of the world a little bit and felt like I, so maybe it gave me a head start and, and being able to handle it and figure out what's supposed to be funny and what's not and what's, sort of, in, you know, which insults are intended to hurt and which are intended to express love. And, um, but I think that had it been set somewhere else in some other, you know, uh, culture, I would have picked it up just as well, right? Oh, yeah. yeah thank you. Uh, Kenny, I, I always try to ask you this question every time I interview you, and I don't know if it comes off that right, because I always am kind of in awe of your writing in terms of the way that you find naturalism within these stories. You find humor without trying to tell the audience that you're sort of letting them go from the sadness of this, which I feel like a lot of times happens in dramedies, if you will, where the, the humor shows up just for the purpose of saying, it doesn't have to be sad right now. You have an incredible way of finding a natural way of weaving these things throughout. Do you end an ear for rhythm and the way people talk? Do you find that that comes natural to you, or is it something that comes with really working out the script and working out these, these scenes between these characters? and sort of rewriting dialogue over and over again. Well, thank you. That's a very nice, generous <clears throat> thing to say. Um, I, I think it comes naturally. I think dialogue comes, feels like it comes naturally to me. If, if I know who the characters are, then I know how they speak. And if I imagine them as real people, then uh, when it's going really well, it just feels like they're talking, and I'm listening, and I'm writing it down. Um, it doesn't always go that well. So you then are trying to get yourself to the Everything, any kind of technique that I have, I would describe as a as various efforts to get myself to that point. So that it then starts to write itself. Um, at that point, I'm just hearing the people talk and I'm writing it down. Um, if a scene isn't working or seems thin or false or <clears throat> pushed or something, then I will go back in and try to uh, once again get myself into a, whatever state of mind that is, where it's just flowing more naturally. Did you go out to uh, this area of Massachusetts and, and, and do some research beforehand? Um, uh, research was like a combination of, of phone calls and looking things up and, and going there. Um, I actually learned a lot just by calling, I called the library a lot to ask how far things were away from each other and what, I called the police, I called the fire departments, I called, I did a lot of calls and I got some misinformation. You just randomly call institutions? <laughs> yeah, I just, sometimes people are a little suspicious why you're calling them and asking if I, you know, did X, which policeman would come to take me away? <laughs> and they're like, why, why, are you, why are you asking that? And I'd say, well, I'm, I'm writing a film. And then they'd say, oh, yeah. And then I'd say, and, and Matt Damon's producing it. Uh, Matt Damon? Oh, sure. Well, in that case, you'd do X, Y, and Z. So, um, but I got some misinformation, or I misunderstood a couple of things. Um, but just the prosaic details. And it actually works into the film really nicely. Um, Lucas's character plays hockey. He, they, the, the character lives in Manchester. Uh, the school is Manchester, Essex. Uh, the hockey rink is in Gloucester. And so there's a certain amount of conversation and, and, and work that Casey's character has to do to find wh where he is to tell him about, tell him this bad news that he's got to deliver him. And just learning the details of the area really enriched the script, um, not just uh, in terms of the flavor of the script, but in terms of the actual uh, content. 
Uh, a scene of a scene of dialogue. Uh, well, a couple. I mean, one. There's the word shark that's that's played with, and the the Star Trek scene where two kids from around Boston are debating Star Trek, and they're hilariously doing it with a, a Boston accent. Were you aware of the of the of the humor of writing uh, that scene, or the humor of two Bo two Boston people or outside Boston saying Star Trek over and over again? Not not really. I mean, it come. It, you know, some words when they get hit hard and. Repeti repetition, well, when they get hit hard and often uh, jump out at you, um, uh, they say, you know, they argue about Star Trek, the little kid goes fishing and everyone, the uncle and father are telling him that he's gonna catch a shock and he says, it's not a shock, it's not a shock. I'm like, oh, it's gotta be a shock, Patty. So that, that, that happens a lot, that was kinda cute. And, but it was, an, it was incidental. Very cute. Very cute, but it was incidental. <laughs> this, is a, this is a character, Ben O'Brien, who plays Lucas when he's a little boy, um, uh, or Lucas as a little boy. Um, no, I think I'm just trying to write the scenes and not really thinking about which words are more, more North Shore or less North Shore. Uh, Casey, your character has moments where you break down as well as sort of keep it together in the face of a moment that many people would break down. As an actor, what, what's harder to do? Sort of to actually break down and have that emotional outlet or to sort of contain it and make it look like your character wants to? Um, that's a, Sorry, good, that's a really good question. question. Okay. I would say that it's they're both the, sort of the same. There are some scenes where I sort of wanted to, to leak a little bit when, instead of sort of containing it all. And I would say maybe Ken, Kenny was more inclined to have, to more be contained, contain the leaks more often. Or maybe there's just a lot of conversation about it. Um, Sort of, he, he I, I like to think of him as there's sort of a boiling pot and he's sort of keeping his lid on it as tightly as he can. And, and sometimes he loses focus and, or he gets drunk or something or, and, or he needs two hands to do something else suddenly and the, the lid pops up and the pot, pot boils over. Uh, so, I, so it's all sort of a boiling pot, whether you've got the lid on or you don't. And um, um, I guess there are, there are some, sometimes you do a scene especially in the middle of a movie like this, where it's a real, real uh, it feels good to, to um, break, break down in some way. Um, and then other days it can be intimidating to have to have that, have, have that level of feeling. And um, <clears throat> um, so, you know, I don't mind either one really. Lucas, you and Casey, as I said, have a kind of buddy comedy duo at mo feeling at moments in the movie. Uh, did you connect before shooting and sort of start hanging out at all together? Uh, no, we did, we did. I mean, we I auditioned twice and we read together in the audition. Um, but for the most part, we didn't really have any time to. Uh, and I, I, that question keeps getting asked, and I always feel like it it actually worked out better that way because. Uh, it's almost like we didn't have anything to, if we had developed a rapport, we might have had to undo it. And so there was nothing to be undone. All we ha And there is an estranged, the, the, the characters aren't like, they're not the most connected people on, on earth. They're, they're, they're very distanced from each other, so. He's the backup. Yeah, exactly. You make it sound like we're not friends. <laughs> Every time you answer that question, you make it sound like you're in a relationship. What? We have a great relationship. We do have a great we relationship. We developed a nice rapport. We, we did develop a nice rapport. <laughs> but I do think it, they did develop a nice rapport, and they spent a lot of time in this car together, and it's nice listening to them over the walkie-talkie talk between takes. Um, Lucas is very irritating, if the truth be known, on the set of a picture, and you're trying to shoot a picture. He's got he a lot of he energy. He won't talk to anyone, first of all. <laughs> um, but... Uh, but I think there is something to that because the, when the characters first encounter each other in this story, they they were close when when he was a little boy. But they, uh, Casey's character has been out of left town and hasn't lived there for five years, and he's come back periodically. So there's a certain uh, familiarity, but no but no uh, closeness, I would yeah. say, at the beginning, um, and it develops into something quite different. Um, not as much as as Lucas's character wants it to initially, but. Um, and in a sort of surprising way, I think, but um, it kind of sneaks up on them. But um, it's nice to see that it was ni that that's somewhat what happened on the set. Well, to orient the answer from my character's point of view, yeah, I would, I would say ahead. that you know he's trying to keep everyone at arm's length, and other people get the hint not to come too close. 
but um, Lucas's character doesn't respect that. You know, someone did the stiff arm, and he keeps coming back, coming back for more, and sort of pushing the arm away and insisting that I treat him like a human, and he treat me like a human. And so if you want to know what this picture is about, it's about how we do anything for family. <laughs> <laughs> but it's kind of true. But also, he doesn't, you, your character doesn't, the nice, one nice thing about your character is that it's impo you, do, you are attached to him, and you do like him, and it's impossible for you to treat him the way you treat strangers and, and, and people who are a little easier to hold at bay. Yeah, yeah, great. I think it's time to take some questions from the audience. <laughs> <laughs> Who has and a question? You are right. You just need your own show. <laughs> it's clearly the next move for you. Hi, guys. Uh, I just want to say I saw the film at the New York Film Festival, and uh, you all did an excellent job. It was a great movie. Great job. Um, my question is actually for Casey. There was a scene later in the film between you and Michelle Williams' character that was uh, very emotional. How did you prepare for that part of the film? Um, I think that that scene is very emotional because of the context of the movie, and it's a very hard story to tell, and uh, to to have the sort of, to not feel like you're being led to having some emotional reaction, but to actually have an emotional reaction is an incredibly hard thing to do, and, uh, and um, I think that the script did a, an awful lot of the work there. Uh, it was our, our job to prepare the scene like any other, meaning learn your lines, um, and understand what's happening in the context of the story, and then be able to relate to the other person with the appropriate feeling that you should be having relating to the, their character. And since it was such a charged interaction between two people who had a lot of history together and really uh, painful history together, they didn't. So then the appropriate feeling was thus as it is in in the movie. I, and um, so we actually didn't rehearse that scene so much, but we did do everything, everything but rehearse it. Talk about it a lot and make sure that the lines, even though there's a lot of overlapping, kind of worked out. And then have faith in the moment of the story, and 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 that you don't have to sort of you don't have to do anything but sort of have those feelings and it sort of works out instead of broadcasting what the moment is supposed to be about by performing it in some other way, telling everyone, pulling your hair out and telling, oh, you know, and you can just have faith in the story and, and, and behaving like a real human might in that scene. Can, can I ask how you, how you shot that scene? Um, we had two cameras. We, sh we put aside a nice half day for it, which is, which is a lot on a, on a movie with a, with a pretty tight schedule. Um, and we would have put aside as much of the day as we needed because it, wasn't a very, it was a very important scene. Um, but we, it was, they were ready to go. I mean, it was not a difficult day at all. It was a, we, we, we got there and we, had the, we, they, we, just, we started shooting and the scene came very quickly and very easily to them because uh, they're both so full of feeling and uh, so, uh, so good to each other in a way. Um, it was really a pleasure to shoot. Next question. Hi, I actually will be going to the screening tomorrow for, at SAG. Okay. So I will see the film tomorrow I'll for the SAG it. Foundation. My question is to the director writer, how much of the, this movie and on your other movies, do you go into it with knowing who your actors will be? Uh, very little, usually. I have almost never written a part for someone. Uh, I, my last film, which is called Margaret, uh, I did write the part of the mother in that for my wife, J. Smith Cameron. And other than that, and I, and I, I you know, I think I'm, I had some, Matt Damon was originally going to play Casey's part, um, and I had him in mind, uh, physically, I think, to some degree, as a, as a starting place, anyway. Um, but he quickly became an imaginary person, and then, you, and then after that, very smoothly became Casey. And now, it's now once you cast the parts, it's in there. You cannot separate your imagination, uh, uh, your initial imaginary character, from the actor who eventually portrays the role. But I think almost never would be the answer. Thank you. I think we have time for one more question. Hey, uh, so I saw the, got to see the movie. Also, it was really amazing. Um, what was it like shooting in Manchester, and uh, was it really like as cold as it looks like in the movie? Um, it was. I really liked shooting there. Uh, I let these guys answer too, but it was hard to shoot inside. A lot of the indoor spaces are very confined and close and small, so you get a little frustrated because 
you walk into the room and you're like, okay, the camera can go in this corner or it can go in that corner and it can't go anywhere else. Um, but shooting outdoors was really a pleasure. And it's cold, it was cold, but it was cold in different days. And some days it was too warm, and some days it was nice and cold. And we just had to adjust. There's a little bit of you know movie trickery to make it look colder than it is sometimes. And sometimes it was plenty cold with plenty of snow. Um, I loved it there, though, particularly like shooting on the water. You guys? Yeah, um, I'm glad that you thought it looked cold. Uh, on the coldest days, it was actually pretty warm. I, for the first time in my life, I had to do some like cold, cold acting, which, which you're really good at. Um, but uh, I feel Thank like you. I was learning on the spot. Um, but yeah, I mean, I can't imagine if we filmed it in like Rhode Island, that would have been probably would have would have made it a less, enjoy less enjoyable shoot. I, I think I t almost took it for granted that we were filming on location, but it was, it was certainly meaningful looking. looking oh, the back. people of Rhode Island are really lovely. I don't know why you say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, my little brother lives in Rhode Island. Yeah, what do you have against people in Rhode Island? <laughs> uh, guys, I have to let you go. Manchester, uh, Manchester by the Sea comes out this weekend, right? It comes into theaters this weekend, today. Uh, it is, without a doubt, the most beautiful film you will see this year. So go see Manchester by the Sea. Guys, thank you so much thank for being here. Thank you. Thank you.